This is the village of Webstead, near Bury St Edmunds, and um, we're going to go to see the church of St Petronilla. Unusual name. Now this is an auxiliary or a secondary graveyard, which is across the little country lane from the church. And the reason I came this way was because there is a car park here that we've used and then we walk down this beautiful grass path underneath this fantastic tree and all the headstones and this lovely spot, look at this do I have to say it but well I must spoilt by a wheelie bin look at this we've got lovely headstones In loving memory of Kathleen Maud Kimball, oh sorry, Kemble Taylor. Look at that. 1969. A lovely bench here. So thoughtful. Though. I mean, this is, they've got a little place for the bench to be on. And we can just sit here and rest listen to the birds chirping away it is lovely the sun's not fully out which is a shame and it's not too warm today for the end of may anyway let's have a look see if we can find the church across the lane it's a beautiful spot isn't it absolutely beautiful look at this shame about these wheelie bins but they're necessary i suspect so we come out to the little lane here in Webstead and the church is the other side here. I believe that looks like the main entrance. And as you can probably see, all these videos that I do of the churches, I don't research them more. I haven't been to the churches before. And I know nothing about what I'm going to see. And here's the driveway that goes up to the church which is behind there I believe but across here going back across the lane again there's another entrance which looks as if there are some more graves yes I don't know it's very odd all this maybe there was a house here at one time but the land is obviously part of the church Lovely, isn't it? John Field Douse, born 9th of April 1927 and died the 23rd of September 2009. So sadly, there are people being buried here currently. It's a beautiful tree. Let's finally have a look at this church. So we're walking up this driveway here. We've got some parking space here, I think, or some work going on. There's headstones here. And there's a double headstone here. Bradbury Last and Harriet Last, 18. 56 and 1851 I guess it's nice I've got a tower here that is rendered two blind windows at the side look and another one up above This, this headstone here has fallen to this one. Huh, and the two hands holding each other. That one's holding the other up. It's very picturesque, isn't it? That's beautiful. 
unfortunately damage here and sad all that. Look at that site, all those headstones. So we've got a church here where it seems to be all rendered. And then we've got the porch here, which is much newer. It's all napped flint. That's flint that's cut in half. And made that isn't quite so old as would be Victorian, I suspect. The old black and red tiles on the floor, a mat, wooden bench. Got a window here which doesn't look that old actually. Plain glass. This side we've got the notices. And your church needs you. This door is locked, but we believe another one is open somewhere. Interesting, if you look at the surround of this door here, you can see all the weathering and the wear when this was obviously exposed to the outside world at one time before this porch was built. Got the net screen to keep the birds out, but the door was open, I think. Maybe we should close it. We'll just leave it closed, I think. So it's quite an extensive churchyard. Some beautiful headstones here. All this moss growing on them. Look at that. What a wonderful sight that is. That is impressive. Difficult to see what that is now. And all this has been growing up amongst the grave. The whole church is rendered. The tower from here looks rather nice. Ramparts at the top. And gravel path all the way around. Now that door's locked as well. Churchyard is full of tall grass and beautiful trees. Lots of birds singing here. And a lot of gravestones that have been knocked over or falling over. At least somebody has put things in to, to hold them in this case, which is which is really good. That's the window that's behind the altar. Stained glass looks beautiful from here. Whether we find a door that's open, I'm not certain. A lot of big graves here. Just have a look at this. I mean, this must have been some important people in the village area that are buried here. Some large crosses again over there. And this really weathered family plot, I guess. So under this tree again, I mean, this whole churchyard is, is a delight for me because I just love all these, I really say romantic 
scenes here. I mean, look at this. Look at this state of this headstone. They used to render them and then impress the letters into the the wet cement, I think, to make these. And of course, over the years, the renderings falling away. Beautiful tree. But this place is just wonderful. It's a tabloid of beauty, really. Aged beauty. Look at this. And all that moss on the top. The damage to it is tremendous. I mean, that has come away from here. And so many of these large graves have been overcome by trees and shrubs. Maybe we should have a look inside the church, see what we can see, as we probably won't be able to get in. Well, you can see a beautiful stained glass window on the other side. Actually, two of them there. The one on the right there has got a little bit of colour at the top. It's a pulpit to our left. You can see more of the church there. An extension that's being built at a later stage and is still in state flint rather than the rest of the church which is rendered. That looks really Cute little church inside. It's a shame we couldn't get in there. So that we can have a look in. Now we can see the font now, the tables down there, and the area to the left there where they, they would have the bell pulls. A little door across there which goes to that extension. And the tiles on the floor are all red. Look like quarry tiles actually, and a grate running down. And here in the middle of the church, we can see all the pews, very neat, very tidy, all the cushions. They're set on a wooden plinth running down each side of the central aisle. The windows on that side of the church opposite are plain, whereas on this side we've got some stained glass. We'll see if we can look a bit further up the church through the window. One of the stained glass windows, it's tinted and we've got these sets of colours set in. And if we look through the window, uh, we can see that there is a stained glass window on the other side. And we're closer to the uh, altar now. We've got pews here sitting, facing each other. Memorials on the wall over there. Here at this window, we can just squeeze in through the rose bush and have a look. And there's the altar. To the right, we can see the stained glass window behind it and a plain glass window in front. Little heater down there. And possibly is that an organ over there? Would be maybe. There's carpet on the floor. So we had a little peek inside the church and we've had a passing look at the churchyard and it's just beautiful. This is monumental, absolutely monumental and picturesque. Beautiful churchyard, beautiful. Again sad that these churches are locked up. It's nice to see that some of these graves have been respected enough to at least 
been propped up or tried to be salvaged in some way. So we take a final look at this church and and uh, well, sad really that we didn't get in. It's quite nice actually, the setting's beautiful. It's got a massive churchyard, lots of birds singing. Oh, and just as I said that, we hear a siren. That really spoils the atmosphere. Tells you that you're not in the 14th and 15th century. We're in the 21st century in Suffolk where churches are locked. <laughs>